is another example of what predatory networks can, can do to the population. When they were threatening the Russian and Wagner interest in the country, immediately Russia sent a few hundred mercenaries from uh, Russia, but also Syria. It became really widespread violence throughout the country in which civilians have been targeted, tortured and killed. Today's episode is a little different. My guest Natalia Dukan, senior investigator from the Sentry, will be talking about one of the most dangerous countries in the world, the Central African Republic. The Sentry is a fantastic investigative outlet that follows a dirty money connected to African war criminals and transnational war profiteers and seeks to shut down those benefiting from violence out of the international financial system. I'm quoting them here. CAR is a landlocked country in the center of Africa, rich in natural and mineral resources, but with one of the poorest populations in the world. It is mired by social divisions, warring rebel groups, and extreme violence. In 2016, Faustin Archange Toadero won the presidential elections, despite attempts at sabotage from rebel factions. He has been heavily reliant on a notorious private militia group called Wagner which is linked to Russian businessman Evgeny Prigozhin. The group has been accused in gross human rights violations in the region, something that Natalia and I will discuss in this episode. We'll also talk about the Sentry's latest report that explores the links between a major French sugar refinery and local militias connected to massacres of civilians. As you can imagine, it's a very dangerous work, so for the sake of our speaker's safety, we decided to skip the video this week. Just to warn you, in the second half of the episode, there will be discussion of sexual violence. So, uh, Natalia, thank you so much for joining Trouble with the Truth. I'm so thrilled to have you here. I've been meaning to talk to you uh, for ages or to one of your colleagues from the Sentry because, well, we'll speak separately about all the incredible work that you do. At first, I wanted to talk about Wagner Group because that's something that drew me to the story and it's a very it's very personal for my organization because Justice for Journalists Foundation was founded after the murder of three journalists in CAR, including Arhan Jamal. But once I started browsing through your reports, I realized that this story is so much bigger than what I first initially imagined. It's a story about century-old exploitation, about profiteering at the cost of human lives. It's a story of endless conflicts and hidden massacres conducted with impunity. And your organization actually helps to uncover these stories. And uh, that's why I wanted to start off by talking about your latest report uh, about the relations between the French corporation, um, well, the sugar refinery, and and how it... Um, hired militias involved in massacres uh, in order to protect its business interests? Um, yes, for sure. Um, we've been investigating this uh, case uh, for the past two years. And like um, every country in war, when there are areas that have little attention, there are a lot of deals going on. And this is what we found out, because the company has a, a sugar factory uh, operate a sugar factory that is located about 400 kilometers from the capital, Bangui. And um, since 2013, armed uh, groups have been controlling the area. And so we've seen a, a total uh, absence of uh, rule of law and, and states. So literally, the, the, the territory is controlled by, administered and controlled by uh, brutal armed groups that are uh, committing mass atrocities uh, where they, they control. So uh, the company uh, had no real choice at the time, which is if they want to continue doing business in that area, they have to engage a negotiation with the militia group. And this is what they started doing, which is reopen uh, safe passage 
passage for the, the trucks so they can uh, deliver fuel and uh, so to operate they needed uh, pesticides and, mm -hmm. and other uh, external products so so they negotiated with the militia group to ensure the safe passage of the trucks. They also um, discussed uh, an arrangement to secure um, the factory and the sugar canes. Uh, and in the meantime, allow the safe passage for uh, local workers, um, which are the sugar cane uh, the cutters, do you say that? So they, uh, discuss, they, they negotiated um, the reopening of the road and, and the security uh, to allow the pesticides and, and other products to, to come to the, the factory. And in the meantime, they, they discussed the security um, of the, the factory and the sugar cane, as well as the cane cutter. So uh, the local workers um, at the factory in Gakobo. So that was end of 2014, and uh, effectively the company started uh, producing sugar again. And very soon, soon after, the problematic was to ensure the distribution of the sugar because um, it's one thing to be able to produce, but it's another to uh, be able to provide uh, um, sugar to local markets in rebel controlled areas. So they also entered into discussion and negotiation with uh, several armed groups, which were um, basically what we call ex-Seleka factions, uh, controlling about 60% of the territories in the north and the east, east and center of the country. So they were a subcontractor, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, the, the number one uh, distributor of the sugar produced by the company. And, and this man was working for the security and, and, and paying taxes to... And do you think they were aware of the human rights atrocities committed by those military groups? Yes, so our investigation, over the course of our investigation, we reviewed several hundreds of uh, pages of sec internal security reports produced by the company and um, we found out that uh, not only uh, the Bangui office of the company was receiving uh, weekly reports about um, mass atrocities being committed by uh, armed groups in the area but also um, to the uh, Paris office uh, um, Samja which is the parent company of, of the, the car based company mm -hmm. Sucafest. so uh, we, we revealed that both uh, the Paris headquarters and the Bangui office were both well aware and informed of the um, uh, mass atrocities committed by the militia groups um, against um, civilians. Um, and in particular, we investigated the attack of a displaced camp uh, in a town called Alindao in 2018. But it's been uh, repeatedly uh, happening, including in Gakobo, that uh, the UPC, one of the militia group, attacked several times the displaced camp that was located right next to the factory. So that was something they were informed about uh, but to be able to continue operating and uh and make profit they had to uh they, they decided they made the decision to continue doing business with the militia group to the expense of the population that's awful they would never do that in france would they and it seems like in cr rules just don't apply and following the release of your report which i would recommend our listeners to just go ahead and and look through because it's just it's really detailed and and i mean it's, it's very upsetting definitely to read was there any outcry internationally and any demands um for this corporation to <laughs> change its conduct so 24 hours um, after the release of the report, the Castle Group uh, announced the opening of an investigation into what they call grave allegations. Mm -hmm. And so 
only they, 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 they also confirmed that they would uh, share publicly the outcome of the investigation. But in the meantime, uh, we responded by saying that it is very important for the victims that so we we first called for an independent investigation by an external body uh, which is very important because um, an internal investigation is not uh, something that according to us would uh, render justice and in the meantime it is very important that in a country that is um, that is facing total impunity that corporate uh, companies like the Castor Group uh, share information to justice uh, institutions, mm -hmm. such as special criminal court uh, that could uh, investigate the case of the Alindo massacre as an example. And in the meantime, the, the French uh, justice is uh, eligible to open an investigation into potential complicity in war crimes and crimes against humanity. We continue to call the justice to do to open that investigation and, um, and ensure that the victims are uh, compensated if the allegations are confirmed by the investigation. Of course, and it's, it's a very complicated process and We'll be watching it closely, and it's, I mean, it's incredible that you and your colleagues made that happen. I, I just think this report is just, well, it's a drop in the ocean, isn't it? And it's just one of the few examples of the way African continent as a whole and a country like CAR is being exploited. And I just wanted to remind our listeners that CAR is a resource-rich country with one of the poorest populations, and you have massive groups foreign uh, and domestic groups that are trying to exploit that and well the local people don't get any cut just get all the violence and the misery and um i thought that maybe now it's a good time to talk about uh, foreign contractors that operate on cr which you've also been covering in your previous reports and uh, namely uh the Wagner mercenaries uh, that are, as I mentioned before, connected to this Russian businessman close to Putin, allegedly uh, Evgeny Prigozhin. So uh, Wagner Group, they are like an octopus with the tentacles that reach everywhere. Uh, they're rumored to be all over the place. So they actually have a presence in Syria, Libya, in several African countries. Um, it's been said that in CR, they actually have very close links to the president, Postin Arkanj Tudera, that they're actually consulting his own personal military and they're also election consultants. Well, you name it, they just do everything. And at the same time, they deny any presence in CR because technically that group doesn't even exist but it does exist and you actually looked into it and the Sentry produced this outstanding investigation uh, alongside with CNN in which it uncovered that uh, the Wagner group was actually involved in massacres in, in CR of innocent civilians. Can you tell me a bit more about yes. that? Yes, so um, what is important to us is to reveal the system and uh, yeah. and. A country like CAR has been uh, um, experimenting a, a state of war for years and years, and uh, and, and the point is that uh, predation by uh, some uh, political and economic uh, actors um, that operate in total impunity is, according to us, one of the fuel of uh, instability and uh, and war by uh, profiting from the war economy there is little chance that um, the system uh, stop in fact it continues to uh, to spread and to and to make victims every day and investigations like uh, on the Wagner group or into uh, the Castel groups to subsidiary is really to show um, how damaging um, doing business in war-torn countries. The Wagner Group is another example of um, um, what predatory networks can can do to to the broader population in where they are. So,
So they really started uh, um, showing um, th this uh, level of, uh, of violence. At first, it's uh, when we heard about the killing of the three journalists in car, but no investigation really confirmed who was behind this killing. Uh -huh. But it created really a feeling, uh, a general feeling that you can't really, you, you, you need to take the um, private contractors very seriously. And they progressively kind of uh, closed the, the, the countries to journalists. I've been working in car for almost 12 years and even though it's very complicated to travel in that country because of the security, because of um, uh, the, the, the difficulty with logistics, uh, roads, etc. There are so many obstacles, mm -hmm. uh, but it was possible. It, nothing was impossible. But since, since uh, two years, really... Uh, journalists uh, find it very difficult to go outside the country. So this is why we're we're having information about uh, what is happening in the capital. But this is where the Wagner Group has been concentrating the propaganda, uh, pro-Russia pro propaganda. So there, there are some uh, Central African that have been welcoming the Wagner Group uh, in the country because they have been uh, countering the threat uh, posed by uh, militia groups throughout the country. Mm -hmm. It is uh, one dimension that is uh, forgetting the rest of the territory and the rural population that is um, facing um, brutal rep retaliation um, from what militia group have been doing. So, uh, as a reminder, last December, a coalition of armed group decided to uh, threaten uh, the central power um, led by Twadera, President Twadera, um, and they progressively uh, encircled the capital, Bangui, and threatened to overthrow the regime. Uh, Russia and the Wagner Group uh, perceive that as a direct threat to their interests mm -hmm. because um, because those militia group were openly against the Russian presence and, and interests. They they tried to make deal with the armed groups. Um, the they, they try to negotiate and the access to the natural resources between 2018 and 2019 uh, and 20. But they realize that it is very, it's a very complicated environment and those militia group uh, act as mercenaries but also as proxy groups for some when they were threatening the, the Russian and Wagner interest in the country, uh, immediately Russia sent uh, several, um, uh, actually several planes were landing every day with uh, a few hundred uh, mercenaries from uh, various uh, nationalities, including Russia, but also Syria. We heard about Iraqis and, and Chechens, and, and we, we, we mention only Syrians because it's very complicated to confirm the nationalities. Of course. But, but our, the witnesses we spoke with mentioned people speaking Arabic and Russians. Mm -hmm. um, and, and who don't speak French. So there is a, an obstacle to be, uh, of communication between the population and those mercenaries. So, so when they, um, um, they decided to uh, wage war against uh, uh, several militia groups, they not only targeted uh, the militia, the combatants, but they also targeted all civilians 
perceived as a complicit or a financier of the militia groups. Um, but outside the capital, there is no... It, it, it became really widespread violence throughout the country mm -hmm. uh, in which civilians, uh, whether or not they, they conducted business with uh, militia groups, they've been targeted, tortured, and, and, and killed. Um, and so we spoke with... Uh, of course. And I can imagine they often don't have choice, right? If someone comes to them and points a gun at them, you know, and say and says, "Do this, bring me some food, or give me some money," what can they do? Refuse? Precisely, precisely. And this is why why it is so um, disturbing because it it's been really um, uh, the targeting has mostly been. Uh, uh, focused on the Muslim community because most of the militia group are mainly composed of um, uh, ethnic groups uh, which religion is Muslim. Mm -hmm. They targeted um, traditional leaders and, and other and other people, but they really are trying to dismantle the. The, the sponsoring and the financing of the militia group as well as the, the combatants, mm -hmm. they, they've been uh, persistently breaking the tradition of some communities. Yes, by, by targeting um, um, civilians, uh, traditional leaders, etc. Mm -hmm. of communities, uh, like the Fulan, as an example, um, they've been, yes, breaking their tradition and their traditional hierarchy and so the the, the problem is that wh what they are creating i am not sure they they really realize is a very a long-term uh, impact that is devastating for these uh, communities that that are um that stretch to um west africa east africa um as an example for for the Fulani. and we're talking about communities that have been suffering well for generations already and this only exacerbates the problem exactly and i think what, what you've outlined here and everything that you were saying that this is just such a complicated problem and when we're talking about a, a country like car it's 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 not just a like one clear cut solution because we're talking about very heterogeneous plus of population it's not that this this village is supports this group and that village is support that group it's it's very complicated and um that i think what a lot of your reports reflect that it's not just um, black and white but you know as i was reading your reports and just the level of detail I just thought, gosh, this is actually, <laughs> this is so dangerous to conduct this kind of work. Um, it's one of the most dangerous regions in the world to investigate um, the crimes of all these groups. And how willing were the victims of those atrocities to speak to you? Unfortunately for this uh, investigation, we decided not to travel. Yeah. Uh, even though we've been traveling for the past few years and and uh, and we've been covering some of uh, the activities carried out by the the Wagner group mm -hmm. in Hart. but for this one we we discussed with uh, our local contacts who, who for the first time said that is not safe to come mm -hmm. with um which is very disturbing to me because we we clearly um, the war in car has uh, taken a, a next step mm -hmm. in terms of uh, violence and um, and the fact that it's more and more difficult to to cover this part of the country, which is which is this part of the the world, which is already forgotten. So it's so important to for the people to ensure that we the world knows what is going on. But now it's extremely complicated. And so because there is no security, we are so scared to talk, 
to be able to speak with uh, some of the of the victims we um we had to either work with uh, local contacts mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to access certain areas in the country um we also managed to speak directly with uh, some victims, for instance. Some had left um, the rural areas and managed to join uh, Bangui. And so we organized phone call. But to be able to speak, some had to get the approval from their family or from the, their, their local leaders. Wow. Because, yes, exactly. Um, this is... Someone can't just uh, stand and say this is what is going on because the, the, there can be uh, some consequences on the entire community. Um, obtain the, the approval from their uh, family or community. Talk with, uh, for instance, a 16-year-old uh, young boy who um, was um, tortured and. Um, and beaten and, and questioned uh, with his brother uh, for about uh, 24 hours and his brother for three days. It was near the town of Bambari. They were afraid, um, but the family had to pay to um, the national forces um, at least $1,000, which per, per person. Um, which, which is something that is also not known is the, 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 the scale of predation because by targeting those, all those people, uh, some are clearly killed right away, but some others manage to, to leave, but uh, in exchange for, for money. And in a country that is the... The, the second poorest country in the world, mm -hmm. uh, one thousand dollar is a huge amount of money, mm -hmm. and especially for communities in uh, in uh, in rural areas where there there is nothing. So so for instance, the Fulani have the have this tradition of um, uh, pastoralism. So in that specific case, they had to sell several um, cows. To be able to to free the the, the two boys, um, and that is not one example. We we've heard about several cases uh, of ransoms for for their life. We also found very difficult to speak with uh, uh, women or men that have been raped uh, mm -hmm. or or victim of uh, sexual violence. That was very difficult and nearly impossible to get them speak about what happened. Um, I think it's not very specific to CAR, but uh, it's just uh, the reality of uh, um, people who are raped or they, are, um, they, they become a double victim because uh, they had to suffer from uh, the torture but they also have um, become um, marginalized in mm -hmm. the community. So our uh, local contact could speak with some, and the story was were extremely disturbing. Um, one combatant had mentioned uh, that he was uh, raped by um, two mercenaries speaking. Uh, Russian and one speaking Arabic. The, the 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 level of details were so disturbing that the man was um, having um, long term health issues. Um, and another uh, person uh, who spoke with our local contact mentioned that she was gang raped by uh, five um, people. Three were Russians, two were national forces. And um, the way they explain it, and that was for several cases, that it was first the Russians and, and the, the Wagner mercenaries served, and then the national forces. It's uh, widespread violence across the, the country. It's not, it's not that we heard about uh, isolated cases. It, it's just everywhere. 
It's just that there is no security for the people to speak, and the state is clearly protecting the, the Wagner group because they are partners. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the international community and the, the UN, the population has for long lost um, trust in, uh, in their cap capacity to protect them. As an example, one witness who spoke with me said, are you Russian? I said, no. He said, uh, because if you're Russian, I don't want to speak with you. Um, and I had to say, look, you, you should feel comfortable, you don't worry. So I spent literally a lot, a, a lot of time just reassuring the people that uh -huh. their testimony will be safe with us. Listening to this is just heartbreak. I can't imagine what it's like for the victims. Testimonies that you're collecting are just invaluable. And you know, it's just so upsetting to hear that the trust between international institutions such as UN and the local communities have been has been broken down. And that's something that I hear from so many journalists and activists and researchers from all over the world. And it's just such an upsetting pattern, really. Um, but nonetheless, in your reports, you actually have some suggestions about how the situation can be fixed, which is very important. So it's not just about collecting evidence, it's also about outlining how it can be made better. I think uh, the key in uh, bringing peace somewhere is, uh, is uh, accountability uh -huh. and justice. You, you can't build a state in a context where predatory networks, foreign, uh, foreign actors can do whatever they want. You need to mm -hmm. uh, bring rules and, um, and ensure that, that peace is more profitable than war. Of course. At the moment, war is more profitable than peace. And that is the problem. And creating consequences means that um, it becomes uh, more expensive to be playing by, by, by the rules of war rather than playing by the rules of peace. So that is our angle, which is, and also in the past few years, uh, all the investigation we've been carrying out, the people demand justice. Mm -hmm. The victims of, of this conflict, the 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 demand justice. Today, we um, we see that um, ministers used to be uh, militia leaders. As an example, the 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 current minister of justice in Car, he um, he used to be uh, the leader of a major armed groups that uh, was in controlling the north of the country and uh, we um we exposed in um in an october called state of prey last october how his own group with uh, two other groups um targeted uh, communities um with uh, the, the aim to regain control of the t entire territory um with the support of the wagner group um, and today, this this man is the Minister of Justice. What message can be sent to the victims when when uh, the the main figure for justice is um, someone who has been committing or ordering um, mass atrocities? So this is this is about changing the system. Mm -hmm. So as I explained. Um, our investigation are just here to show um, what is wrong with the system and what can be done about it. And it's also a way to say that all the the the, the work done by you know civil civil society organizations that are promoting reconciliation between communities um, that are. Um, the, you know, uh, carrying um, humanitarian projects, etc. Those efforts um, can can turn into development. Mm -hmm. 
that as long as we are seeing that the country is hijacked by predatory networks, it is very difficult to, to build anything. I think that what the century is doing is acting as the um, the agents of the good and you are helping in your own way to change that situation for the better and I'm so grateful for that and I just want to encourage our listeners to go to the Sentry website to actually read their reports just educate yourself learn about what's happening in African countries and if you're moved by that please just support their efforts and support the Sentry for their outstanding reporting and thank you so much for this it's I mean it was a very tough conversation um, thank you Lana